Welcome to the RiseCon studio. I'm Melissa Chang, and we're in conversation the next 30 minutes with Jawad Fairuz. As usual, post your questions in the chat box, and we'll get to as many questions as possible. Now, Jawad Fairuz is chairman and founder of Salam for Democracy and Human Rights. He's a former Bahraini member of parliament who resigned in 2011 over the government's violent response to protesters during the Arab Spring. He was later detained and tortured, and while overseas, he was stripped of his citizenship. And essentially, he's become stateless and been living in exile ever since. So statelessness is an issue that he very much advocates for. Some of you may already have seen him. He presented a lightning talk entitled, Are Human Rights Linked to Good Governance? Bahrain and the 2022 Parliamentary Elections. And uh, his short film was also shown in that session. Jawad Fairuz, welcome. Thanks a lot, Samuel Shah, and uh, good to be with you and with the rest of our audience today. Um, I'd like to start with um, your status, statelessness. This is something that happens to a lot of people. Um, certainly in my personal experience, I've interviewed Uyghurs overseas. Uh, they hold a Chinese passport. Uh, they were living and working overseas. And you can well imagine that there was no desire to go back to China, uh, where they would inevitably be, be uh, put in detention camps. So many Uyghurs have stayed overseas, uh, and their, passport has, uh, their passports have expired. Or even when they go to the Chinese embassy, the Chinese embassy ha has, uh, you know, essentially ripped their passport apart. So can you give people a sense of what it means to be stateless and um, the limits of how you can live? Unfortunately, one of the biggest uh, grave human rights violations which is ongoing in this planet uh, that uh, 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 there are stateless people. And the uh, most grave part of it that uh, if you already have a nationality and by sudden uh, your nationality will be revoked and you become stateless, like my case. And the uh, clear sequence of it that uh, you're going to be unknown uh, person. At the same time, all your basic rights to you, it will be uh, deprived. Um, uh, and saying that, that uh, you don't have an official document, you cannot travel, you cannot have the basic services, either by state you are living in or your own country and even all your civil political rights will be deprived. Usually I call it, it's like a social death, that uh, it's look like you are uh, not uh, existing and uh, all entire your day-to-day -day life will be so complicated that you cannot be engaged. We have uh, this phenomenon on this planet, unfortunately, although UNHCR, they launched a campaign, I belong since 2014, and uh, there are a huge um, international campaigns uh, with so many international NGOs and UN uh, uh, human rights bodies that try to challenge it. But as I can see, and especially when someone like me that already had a nationality, been elected member, and by sudden his nationality will be uh, um, revoked due to the political decisions without any judicial uh, process, without any clear evidence, just uh, due to uh, a wish and the, the demand of the political authorities uh, to uh, target and uh, revenge from the, the political opinions. Even if there are being elected uh, members, uh, like my case, I've been elected as a councillor for four years and elected member of the parliament for five to six years, yet I could find the by sudden, uh, my case is being uh, dealt by the, the authorities uh, as an opponent, and then they revoked my nationality. It started in November 2012, then they uh, gradually increased the uh, revoking nationality of the citizens uh, till it reached almost 990. So uh, I think now the time comes that international committee should have all joint effort to either to, to solve uh, gradually the issue of the stateliness or to prevent any states revoke the nationality of their citizens. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your organization, Salam for Democracy and Human Rights? Yes, uh, we mainly focus over three main issues, human rights, sustainable development, 
and uh, political reforms through uh, uh, adopting uh, democratic principles, measures, and so on. We believe that uh, the security and stability in this planet can be maintained if, if each state adopted uh, this uh, comprehensive package of um, uh, evaluation through, first of all, they have to have a continuous political reform by adapting democratic value. Then they should have a sustainable developments uh, a program, part of the governmental programs. All that should be based on the human rights principles, which is going to be a part of the International Human Rights Convention and so on. So we are encouraging a lot this type of the adaptation, and we are engaged on a lot of activities, campaigns, and so on. And, and meantime, we focus in general in the MENA, in the, the Gulf region, in, 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 in general, and specifically in, in Bahrain, where we are in contact with the victims. We are asking for their accountability, and we try to spread as much as we can the awareness about the human rights values. And we believe that more people, and especially the victims and their family, they are in contact with the, uh, different UN treaty bodies, and they are aware of their basic human rights more. They can um, they make a good campaign and, 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 and reduce whatever harassment and targeting is being opposed to them. But at the end, it should all that uh, to be related to the local legislation, which we are fighting for to uh, amend and upgrade the, 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 the local legislation to be in the standard of international conventions of the human rights. You know, you mentioned the work that you do um, in the MENA region. I want to go back to about 10 years ago. Um, this is when Access Now uh, started out during that period of the Arab Spring and the organization, as you know, has hosted RightsCon uh, in Tunisia in 2019. I'm curious what you think. Where do things stand in the Middle East, particularly the Gulf, a decade later after the Arab Spring? It seems really grim. Uh, first of all, we can see due to the lackness of the, any adaptation of the continuous political reform, as I indicated, uh, due to uh, um, un, 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 unrealistic measures where the authorities, they deal with opposition in general and absence of freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, absence of the basic political rights and civil rights, we can see such uprising is continuing uh, occasionally. If we can take Bahrain as example, it's since a century uh, and um, we can see this uh, each decade we are facing a, an, an uprising because the, the basic citizenship right is in absence and uh, people are demanding that uh, they want to have the, the, their basic rights. So with regard to the better income, political rights, uh, uh, the, the human rights to be respected and so on. So um, um, uh, after the Arab Spring uh, sparked in Tunisia and in, in December 2010, as everyone knows that has, has been spread in an Arab world, uh, in, 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 in Egypt, in, in Yemen, in, in Syria, and it continued in Bahrain. Bahrain was part of it, although Bahrain uh, um, being in, in so much uh, type of the uh, political crisis uh, since a long, long time back, but it was a chance that for the people to be in the street and demand their, 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 their basic rights and demand their, their reform and power share in the government. As we can um, uh, realize that Bahrain, unfortunately, it is an absolute monarchy where entire power in the hand of the uh, ruling family, all three bodies, uh, legislative body, executive body, and judiciary body in the hand of the ruling family and the people demanded their, their rights. And at the beginning, it was, uh, good turnout and uh, I believe that it was a good chance for some uh, a positive change on that region, I mean a region in general in the Gulf and part of it Bahrain, but unfortunately due to what being called the counter-revolutionary governments and, 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 and states, all that being collapsed uh, and uh, with, the, with the, let me say, silence of the Western government and maybe sometimes is, is being looked at the type of the conspiracy with these um, uh, um, 
uh, governments uh, that the counter-revolutionary uh, um, succeeded to suppress and to uh, trash all these type of the political uh, 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 uprising. And now we can see that uh, entire uh, control is in the hand of these governments. Uh, it's, it's been controlled, has been called uh, by uh, security iron fist and uh, basic uh, rights are being suppressed. Uh, there is no chance for any type of the freedom of expression, freedom of assembly and, and the rest. And as I indicated, uh, many, many human, grave human rights violations have been acted, starting with the continuous of the death penalty, uh, systematic torture, uh, revocation of nationality, and uh, um, the forcible deportation of the country, which we have it like in Bahrain, after your nationality will be revoked, you will be expelled out of the country uh, forcibly. And uh, the same time, whenever you are active and you could be targeted, your family could be targeted, uh, and, 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 and a lot of type of the discrimination is being, being imposed. Now the question is that, is this gonna be like a continuous way of the government that they can have control. I believe it is gonna be very, very short term because it is op opposing what uh, we can believe that, uh, that the security and the stability will be only maintained through a, a power share, through the, the, the human rights respects and the continuous political reforms. In absence on this three uh, uh, continuous uh, demands of the basic rights, I think the stability will not be there. So I'm expecting that uh, after a while, maybe we're gonna uh, uh, facing another wave of Arab Spring, uh, uh, more or less, because uh, uh, the people still, they think that uh, their basic right as a citizens is not being demanded. Uh, we have a lot of uh, financial uh, service type of the demand is not being uh, uh, provided by the government and and and, and uh, considering that even they are not elected government. Uh, so uh, I believe that in near future, we can uh, um, face another wave of the Arab Spring. Now, you mentioned um, in that there are parliamentary elections later this year. I'm assuming that uh, you're not quite hopeful of the results of that, given what you've just told us about the way the government is structured. Unfortunately, we can uh, hear a lot of uh, uh, um, high quality type of the democratic values or names like election, municipality election, parliamentary election. Even we can see some human rights uh, bodies within these governments, but it is on, only being used as a tool to uh, 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 whitewash uh, these uh, governments. Uh, for example, in Bahrain, uh, when it comes to the parliamentary election, the, 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 the National Assembly in Bahrain consists of uh, two houses, the upper one, uh, which is elected body, they have the all power which is elected, I mean, uh, appointed, it is appointed house, appointed by the king, they have the same number and the same power as elected house. Elected house, the constituency is being drawn by the uh, uh, king himself. And um, uh, uh, all the all, uh, political opposition's groups is being banned by law uh, after they pass a law. And then their uh, members and the leaders are banned from any political participation. They cannot candidate themselves. They extended that one to include it over of any uh, civil society's election that they have been banned to be part of it. So they cannot be even part of any sports club or uh, uh, um, charity funds or even any type of the of, of, of the of the unions, labor unions, a woman union, and so on. So totally they have been banned to practice their, their, their basic political rights. So in such conditions, are you expecting to have free and fair election? Are you expecting to have a for uh, a representative of the people through elected house? And, and, and even if we can have a few individuals, but with the limitation of their power, what they don't have the, the full power right to either to uh, monitor or to pass uh, uh, legislation in favor of the rights of the people. So it will be end up like a, a, a decorative type, a cosmetic mm. type of the election, cosmetic type of the parliament. 
I believe that without uh, agreement through a national dialogue to reach to the uh, uh, conciliation on having a free election and independent uh, judiciary uh, and, 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 and uh, legislation uh, uh, bodies and, and elected or uh, uh, directly or indirectly governments with that and uh, assuring that the, the full power of the parliament to be in an, 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 an service uh, based on the one man, one vote uh, and, and for sure security for all. Without right. that one, we will not get uh, a, a right track toward stability, security, and continuous uh, reform. So once again, for sure, the coming election in Bahrain in the absence of good governors and uh, without any accountability mm. and without adaptation of transitional justice, it will be uh, really cosmetic uh, once again, like it's been in 2000. Uh, uh, 12, 2014, right. 2018, and the uh, coming one in November this year. Now, RightsCon is at the intersection of human rights and technology, so I want to pivot to talk a little bit about that. During the Arab Spring, as, as you know, um, it was discovered that Bahraini pro-government hackers targeted human rights activists during that time with the software created by a German company, uh, Finfisher, uh, to try to spy on them. Nowadays, we have the Israeli company Pegasus, another software that many state actors have used, including states in the global south. And there's been a lot of media outcry, both during Finn Fisher and the case uh, of Pegasus, the use of surveillance software by states, um, not for ostensibly law enforcement reasons, but to target activists. How do you think we can stop this. There's been so much media outrage and outrage among the activist communities, but it doesn't seem to stop these software surveillance companies from selling to states and from states from abusing them. Unfortunately, this is one of the shame act uh, uh, by the, uh, some authorities in the, in, in the MENA region. And it is so clear that Bahrain used the, the, the this uh, type of the, the, the spywares, uh, uh, and uh, either in 2010 and with this uh, German type of the software uh, for Frank Fisher, and um, many Bahraini activists uh, uh, during that time, they were been abroad, they've been targeted, and their uh, emails and uh, other uh, software that they used to use uh, has been targeted, and uh, uh, actively, whatever they used to communicate has been monitored. And once again, as you indicated, uh, the, the biggest one, the recent one, uh, clear evidence being given and uh, many international media covered uh, during that time that many Bahraini uh, human rights uh, defenders, uh, not for once, even some of them, their mobile has been hacked for eight times, like Ibtisam Asayek, some other lawyers in Bahrain and some are activists abroad. Uh, it is shown that it is like a systematic tactique and systematic uh, mythology by these authorities to how to hack and uh, try to penetrate uh, all the electronic stuff or, or software of the activists. And I believe the now right time comes that internationally we have to pass international convention to prevent it and prohibit uh, all the states to use such software. It is totally should be now illegal act and our country will use it, there should be certain sequences and, and some type of the punishment to be applied. Uh, without that one, I'm, I'm afraid that such bad act and, and, and wrong act will be continued by these authorities and governments. Thank you so much. I want to turn to questions now. Um, someone is asking what your message is to governments that claim that protecting human rights goes against national security. This is something that I suspect is um, often repeated by many uh, leaders of Gulf states. You've heard this one before. Yes, I think, unfortunately, it is a claim not uh, seriously that is willing to protect uh, the basic rights of the human being. I think the main principle of any legislation which be passed uh, with related to the security should be based on the human rights value. We cannot penetrate our basic rights due to the claim that because we want to protect the security. 
All that one should be within the international conventions that all of us who agree to be within the mechanism of the United Nations. Without that one and without international agreement, which should be part of our basic human rights, I think this type of the legislations or the accusations shouldn't be uh, accepted and should be rejected. Unfortunately, we know that so many governments like Bahraini governments, they use a lot terminology of uh, fighting the, 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 the terrorism uh, to, 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 to target and, 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 and limit uh, the activities of the human rights defenders. So what they do, they try to uh, amend uh, uh, so many local legislation to say that it is gonna be targeted to, 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 to fight against the terrorist uh, uh, act, but actually it is targeted against the activists and prevent them to um, uh, uh, practice their, their basic rights. So in short, most important that it should be within the boundary of the human rights, any legislation going to be passed, and within the boundary of international conventions, within the, 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 the UN conventions. Thank you. Now, um, a participant by the name of Abir wants you to comment on the situation with Tunisia um, and the status of the democracy there. I know there's um, 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 sort of a problem with the parliament right now, I don't know how closely you follow Tunisia, but any thoughts on that country? As a general rule, is that uh, any particular individuals, either he is a president or he is a king or, the, or whatever we call, you shouldn't have the full power to freeze a uh, constitution or to dissolve the parliament. And uh, I believe that uh, the democratic process uh, are so clear on this regard. The basic thing that uh, if there is any dispute, there should be either through a clear dialogue with all political parties and all the activists and here emphasize the role of the NGOs. Secondly, the referendum, the, the, the going uh, to, 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 to the poll stations, to the elections, that should solve the problem, not to depend on the military, not to depend on dissolving uh, a, a role of the parliament, not to depend on freezing the, any article of the constitution, constitution should continue as active as all the time, and we should take uh, 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 any type of the military intervention away from any of our political disputes, only through the dialogue, and then agreeing to go to the early election, all that could be solved. But unfortunately yet in Tunisia, that is not being practiced. And, and we believe on that, uh, uh, the, the, the Tunisian political activities and uh, the role of the NGO is so, so long. And I hope that all of them can get together and try to practice peacefully whatever pressure they can to maintain the democracy and, and to be as a model for the rest of the Arab world to have a transitional of power in the same time, a very uh, democratic uh, process to any changes occurring in this uh, uh, country. Great, thank you. Another question is asking about how civil society around the world can support activists, especially those expressing themselves online, especially uh, since activists are being targeted by their governments. Yes, uh, for sure we need uh, to enhance the role of the NGOs. I believe that any democratic process without the role of the NGOs is going to be um, a, 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 a short one and going to be un, incomplete. We need to enhance the role of the NGOs. And we, knew, we need to have a unity and more cooperation and contacts uh, with, with, with NGOs internationally. As I can see now, it is a good step and good indication that even uh, UN bodies, they try to give a bigger room or more room for the NGOs, they are involving them now as an advisory board. They are giving them more in their campaigns, which is good indications. And, uh, uh, and we wish even that will be extended to the Human Rights Council, which is unfortunately here yeah, the Human Rights Council is representing the states, which we believe that the consultative status of the NGOs should be easier than it is and more role right. of the NGOs. Uh, as much as we can, we have to engage NGOs in all UN mechanism, and we should um, demand the states that they should give for the room for the power right. share of the NGOs and, and any process they do. Uh, there's a question here that goes back to the issue of statelessness, which was at the start of our 
uh, conversation. Um, they're asking, could you unpack the impact of statelessness in the Gulf a bit more? They talk about Kuwait and also the fact that Qatar has deprived citizenship of a clan. Uh, there's also the UAE that has its own stateless population. Uh, comment a little bit about that. Unfortunately, the issue of the nationality in the Gulf is a little bit sensitive for the states. They look at totally as a sovereignty of the state and without any type of the uh, uh, state of law, without any type of the, uh, let me say, uh, away from international conventions. The states, <clears throat> they uh, feel they have all the full rights, either to um, refuse the nationality of the uh, people who already lived their centuries back, like Bidun in Kuwait, they have been deprived their, their, their rights. We have uh, um, um, more than 200,000 uh, Kuwaitis are stateless in, in Kuwait. Imagine you are living in Kuwait, your father, your grandfather lived in Kuwait, and they are been there so, so long time, centuries back, but you don't have any basic right of as a citizenship as being Kuwaitis, you've been deprived of your basic services by the government and so on. You don't have official documents, you cannot travel, you cannot have education, you cannot have birth certificate, you cannot get marriage uh, so, so easily. As I said, it's totally like a social death. Or in another time, whenever there's a political dispute, your nationality will be revoked and you'll be expelled out of country. This is so clear now in the Kuwait as a Bidun, and now we could see it's happened in Bahrain, by revoking nationality, and unfortunately in Qatar, when some tribe, uh, they're being banned of their basic uh, Qatari citizenship. Jawad Fairuz, we have time for um, just a final remarks. Do you have any <coughs> final thoughts um, before we wrap up? I encourage all the activists, once again, sorry, <clears throat> my throat. Yeah, have a drink of water. I'll have a drink of water as well. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I think uh, with the digital sphere and, uh, and shrinking the, the distance among us as activists and as the NGOs uh, and, and all those who are demanding the change in this planet, uh, we have to engage ourselves with our international uh, events re related to the uh, human rights, uh, democratic change, and so on. And once again, I emphasize a lot that we have to, um, it depends on the civil civil movement and away uh, from any type of the violence. And we have to be uh, um, uh, managing all our uh, act uh, on the uh, very peaceful manners. Uh, the change is coming. We have to be more patient, but active at the same time. We should have clear vision that uh, to maintain a, a, a peaceful planet through adaptation of uh, democratic process and exchange of our all experience toward um, uh, further establishing um, a, a stability and exchanging all our vision toward sustainable developments. And uh, once again, I believe all that cannot be achieved without the human rights and basic rights, which been so cleared mm. by the United Nations. And uh, uh, with our coordination, I think that we can manage it so for sure. Thank you so much. And for ending on a hopeful message, Jawad Fairuz, thank you. We're very grateful for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much and good luck. And for the rest of the RightsCon community, as always, enjoy your sessions and stay engaged. See you later.